it's important to understand the promises that God has placed in your life. Because at the end of the day, if you're not able to stand firm and fight for what's yours, a stand up for what's yours, people will take advantage of it. For example, you get a job and you've been, you know, within your job, you have your leave days, you have your sick leave, you have all that stuff. And then you get ill. And then now you're being told, now you can't do this until you do this for you to get this. And you're thinking, I've been working for you for X amount of time in a year. Why is it that my time for rest is something that I'm almost being denied? I'm not a robot. If you don't stand up and be able to go back to the promise as per what you had on that contract, then you'll never understand your value. If let's say you need um, you need rest from work, you know it's a leave. You want to go and have a moment with yourself. If you don't understand your rights, if you don't understand your place, they will take advantage of you, and you know they'll tell you no, you can't have X amount of days. They'll break it and break it and thin your thinking. But when you need A, B, C, D, I'm there. You call me off work hours, I come through. But I need X amount of time for rest. It's like I'm begging. So it's important to know your place. I know your rights. I know your promises. And you know, in that regard, you're like, hey, remember that contract you signed? Was it not saying A, B, C, D? I think we should, we should go back and revisit. Because that's my right that you're taking away from me. Let's say you have a business. You are in partnership with someone. It's time for payment. And they keep telling you, oh, we, we didn't manage to pay. We had to sort out some internal issues here. And then you're thinking, well, as per the contract we signed and the agreement we signed, the internal affairs is none of my business. I need my pay X amount of time. I have bills to pay. I have things I need to do, which is none of your concern. Your concern is to ensure that I get my payments on time because I deliver whatever products or services that you need to your company in due time. So... Whatever your personal things are, they don't concern me. And if you had been, I mean, polite enough or courteous enough, you could have given me a, you could have preempted that an issue would occur within payments. Then I'll be able to think about it and see how much can I stretch myself to agree with you. But if I fail to make a delivery or offer the product that you need, you'll be the same one to complain. So why should I be the one to carry up a burden that's not mine? Uh huh. Uh, you are an employee. You done a gig summer and you not gotten your payment for that job. Same logic applies. If you don't go back to what you had agreed on, you end up being used. And people have a tendency to take advantage of other people and put people in classes. Now, for example, someone will will look down on some, and that's where people need to be very cautious. People do this so much until you sit back and ask yourself, what's really going on? For example, someone who, for example, is self-employed or is employed, whether the business or the company is stable, really doesn't matter. They're employed. They get their salary or whatever way they get their commission. And then they have an employee under them. And in that situation, a house manager, a nanny, a gardener, um, maybe a driver, depending on. The, the financial status of that individual. But they are failing to pay this indiv those under them because they are, they, they, this term they use vulnerable. And I'm thinking they're just human beings. If they didn't offer their service, you wouldn't have that job. You wouldn't have whatever you needed to do. They wouldn't be able to take care. And exclusive of what you choose to pay them, it is how you pay them. You decide you're going to pay them in, you break it in X amount of time, yet they deliver in due time. They've never missed, they've never, you call them, they're there. But you, you want someone else to sort out your mess, to sort your work and everything that you do on time, but to mistreat the other people. And then when they ask for their right, you start looking for more reasons to frustrate them more. And when things don't go well with you, you start claiming, it's witches, it's warlocks, and everything. While your action towards another individual has already opened a legal ground that is already open enough for 
go to even look at you and say, um, no, what you're doing is wrong. You can't exploit someone and anticipate that things will go well with you because no one can see you. You mistreat an animal, no one can see you. You mistreat a child, no one can see you. You mistreat people, I say, ah, these people will understand. No one can see you. You get paid on due time, but you can't make payments to the ones because they say, ah, they are vulnerable. Ah, no one knows. God is watching. It's just a matter of time. And your house of cards will fall. If you look at being able to understand your promises, if you look at even scripture, the daughters of Zilophad, when they approached Moses, I reminded him of the promises that were made to their father and their inheritance. And within that time, the women weren't looked much, given much appreciation. But these seven ladies stood up and said, ah, uh-uh. ah. And they, when they stated, they said, the sin of our father is not our sin. He failed in his sin, but there's an inheritance. And eventually they get, they not only got what was there, they even got husbands in the process. I mean, from the household of Manasseh, because they're in the same tribe. If you look at Caleb's daughter, after their conquering of different territories, and she remembered which area her father had uh, gotten, she went and reminded him of her promise and told him, I want between the springs and everything. The husband had won. And so she was like, um, yeah, won, good. But I need water, the water area. If you never understand the promises that God has for you, if you don't go back and, and remember, then it will just pass like it, ne- it never was there. Because you always need to go back and remember every argument and every promise. We live in a time whereby people will take advantage of you. Uh, you are in the entertainment industry, your promoter, um, your recordings, your labels will take advantage of you. They'll tell you, oh, this event is worth X amount. But whatever they give you is peanuts. And then you get to the royalties is even worse. More, more peanuts. And you're thinking... But that wasn't the agreement. And when you now go and do your own research, you realize you just go played. And it's, it's actually worse for most people within the entertainment industry or content creators when they sign some of these contracts. Because when you sign and they say, for example, you are called ABCD, let's say that's your biological name. And then what they choose is this company, X company or a label or whoever it is or whoever you're in contract with. They say you cannot use now your original name. So what happens is they have put you in a chain in that when they when you pull out of that contract, you can't even use your own name. You have to come up with a name that's not even within the fine line of what was on that contract. Because people have a tendency to take advantage. And if you don't know your rights and step up, I look for the legal ways to pursue. Your story dies. Because people have a tendency to take advantage. Exploitation is something that's very sad. And someone will complain so much of how, let's say, their leader is corrupt and ABCD. But they themselves are triple worse. Because, you see, when you point a finger at someone, you have one point in right. How many point in back? People don't think like that. You don't look at yourself being a contributor to something. If you talk about corruption, you have to look at yourself. Am I a participant in corruption? If you look at exploitation, am I a participant in exploitation? You can't say because that one, they have money. They, ah, 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 you look at it. Because for anything to happen, it has to compound. So what is your role in that compounding of that issue? Because people like to exploit people and take advantage of people if they don't know their meaning and their worth. And that's why many people are taken advantage of as employees, in family members, and you're wondering what's going on. It's important to know your place, know your rights, understand the agreements and the contract to sign, understand what is for you and what, if it doesn't happen, how you should be able to pursue it, because if you don't know your rights, if you don't know the promises made, if you cannot go back and remind, you will be exploited. People will take advantage of you. People will run you over, and they'll make excuses of running you over. But when you have the receipts, 
everyone goes silent. And it's sad because we at a time whereby if you're doing any business or working with anyone, anything that's transactional, you have to screenshot every agreement. You have to email every agreement. Because if you don't have anything solid, your conversation will be hearsay. It actually gets worse if you're in a foreign country. They speak a language you don't speak. And there's a way they can maneuver their laws against you. If you look at Joseph and Potiphar's wife, he had no voice where he was. Because Potiphar's wife was from that country. She could be able to say anything and do everything. He had no voice. And that's the sad thing about people who like to exploit people. You come into a foreign land and a particular job that you had agreed on, some nations even take away, some nations even take away your passport and everything and they silence you. And they make sure they put you in a place whereby you can't be able to come out. Even if there's a war in that country, you can't even notice because you are so far hidden. And it gets worse when the two nations have a diplomatic relations and then they choose. What do they profit from each other? You think they'll care about their citizens or who are in these foreign nations? They don't care. They'll stick to their agreements and they won't. They will only show they rescued X amount of people, but they're caring, they're concerned, you never hear that. And for people who don't understand, we'll accuse those ones who are on the other hand and say they didn't step up enough, they're doing enough, but they keep forgetting. They're not in that person's situation, in that country, in that nation, to look from the lens of that person. And to be able to see truly this person have been confined. How many people are being S trafficked and H trafficked all over the world? And the people who traffic them is their own relatives. How? A relative calls you from a foreign land and they say, Ah, I've seen your son. Oh, I've seen your daughter. They have great potential. Here, jobs are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You know what? I'm going to pay for their ticket documents. And here, from, from your local nation, you're thinking, ah, finally, a door has been opened. And so you are happy, you're exhausted, you're excited and everything. And so you land into this country. And when you land into this country, uh, the person doesn't show you immediately. They just put you in a place and then you realize you actually can't live. Now, they are the ones who are calling your family and telling them you are good and good. And then the moment you escape from their chains, they start maligning your name back at home and say, this person doesn't work enough. This person is lazy. This person, you know, that money I asked you. Mind you, as in this country, you have been S trafficked or H trafficked. You've lost a lot of yourself or you are being, you are a slave. You are overworking in a place. And then on the outside, people say, oh, these people are normally together. They are fine. But nobody knows the cries and the tears you cry. And that's very important that we should be very cautious with judging people. And someone will say, this person left the country and they are not able even to support their family. Who told you they are okay in that country? What guarantee do you have that they are okay in that country? Because many of them, when they left their country, the promises that they were given in their local country, when they landed in the foreign country, they realized things are not the same. And now, they are chained. They are chained in two ways. They are chained from the context of now they can't come to their country because either this individual has a legal document that is there, like a passport. Two, they are chained with language barriers. They don't even understand how to be able to express. Three, they are chained with the laws of that country. And if that person understands whoever has is the host, if they understand the language of that country, the laws of that country, they can easily take advantage of this person from this other country. And someone's life is gone like that. And many years later, people come to learn. But by the time you're learning, the damage that this person has endured is beyond what you could fathom. But... Who are the main culprits of S on H trafficking? Are they not relatives? Are they not family members? Are, are they not neighbors? Are they not friends who are able to notice a potential in someone and take them? Exploitation is such a painful thing 
And when people know that you don't know your right, that you don't understand your legal place, people will rip you off. People will rip you off good. If you don't have information and do your proper due diligence, you're in big, big trouble. And that's why it's easy for people to manipulate. And then what they'll do is they'll always have someone to create a propaganda and be able to malign your name. And so eventually no one ever gets to hear your side of the story because you've been suppressed, you've been crushed, and then an assumption has been thrown. Now, it's like saying this. If a country, let's say a particular, commun- a particular people in a country are known for something, does it mean that everyone in that country is in agreement to that action? No. But nobody sees that. For example, when a diplomat of a country goes into another country and does things that are wrong, we carry the whole country, right? Because they are the representative. But does it mean that the whole country is in agreement? If a country goes all out to to another country, does it mean that the citizens of that country are in agreement? No. It's a, a, a small percentage of people with power and means were able to sway everything to their advantage and then they, everyone else then carries. If a particular community is known for something that's wrong, does it mean everyone in that community is the same? No. If someone says a particular generation, whether it's X, whether it's millennial, whether it's a, a Z or whether it's alpha, does it mean that everyone tied in that generation is the same? If now they even put it to demographics, does it mean that everyone in that demographics is the same? No. There could be a higher number, a higher statistical number that is proved, but it does not mean that everyone else falls under the same. Just because you have a sample size doesn't mean you have the culmination of everyone. And that becomes the saddest thing about exploitation, is that people are able to take advantage and do and use anyone and everyone as they deem please, as long as one, they have the law or found ways of maneuvering the law. Two, they have understanding of the language of the land. That's why most politicians have a legal background, either they are lawyers, something legal related. Because when they get into power, they will know which bill, which law they'll be able to pass. And because they understand lobbying, because let's say you are going against a multinational company. What do multinationals always do? They lobby. And they will always get content creators, influencers, celebrities, and politicians. Pay them X amount of money. And now, to, to, to be the one voicing, and now for the political side, the parliamentary side, they'll have the whoever is the political person. And the others, the entertainers, those are the backups. Those are the voices out there through their platforms. But the politician is singing the tune of the lobbyist. And so what happens is when they have done their campaign and everything, see that political individual was eating the money for this X amount, this company, multinational, wherever they are. When they get into power now, they have to sing the tune. They have to pass the laws. They have to pass the bills. They have to do everything to appease. And let's say they, they have no interest in the political in the next season. They now move from not only being a political lobbyist, now they work for the company they were lobbying for. And the game still continues. And then you're all wondering, why does company A keep thriving in doing such atrocities and they're never held accountable? They had a political person whom they were able to pay their company. Because you need to ask yourself this question. How much money is used by politicians during campaign? Put that figure, a rough figure in your head. Okay. When they win that seat, how much money do they get paid as per their salary or allowances? You will always notice that the figure they used in campaigns versus the figure they are getting paid, let's say it's a salary and allowance, is such a very big figure. They are not, the, the inequality is quite high. So how do they make that extra? As they are pushing, apart from now their theft and their corruption and their greed, they lobby. And as they lobby, they're able to get kickbacks because now they can't pay up because you never know what kind of deals they make when they're getting this campaign money. And then as a citizen, you end up paying the price. 
because now you not only been exploited from the multinational you have been exploited by your politician who's now found a loophole through the judiciary and the legislature and even the executive and now as a citizen you're now chained again exploitation is such a menace when you get to understand how deep the rabbit hole goes even within the religious or faith institutions if a politician wants to stay sit in power and they know there are leaders who are true who can be a threat they won't go to them they'll go the ones with the bigger following either either compromises the other one either the faith leader or religious leader is compromised they compromise or the other way one holds one holds the other one in in a chain and so the religious or faith leader says fine i'll play your part i will tell my people this is this i will sing this tune you owe me kickbacks i will receive your money openly as if it's um fundraising and i will split it within your companies i get my 10% you get your 90 none of my business and the congregants are saying yes and that is why it gets sad whereby we see very big churches being built instead of a very simple church but you'll find the congregants are sick no one cares they have never gone to school no one cares or even most of these church institutions they have schools but they're very expensive that their congregants can't afford it the businesses they have when they choose to hire anyone who's a congregant or a member of that church they are paid less and they start thinking what's going on because the game and the cycle keeps going on and if they find if they have a very big case you know those sa kind of um uh cases they find who do they who has been very loyal and then they use that person fund that person to be the one to malign the name of a victim and that's how many of these people go are able to run because you ask yourself you're driving a range fine let's assume you got it in a legal let's assume but your members of your church are hungry and there's nothing you are doing there's no project you are doing there's nothing you're ripping them off in broad daylight same thing ananias and kaifas were doing at their time and anyone who spoke against him like a lord jesus Christ and the apostles were pushed down same thing is seen today the ananias and kaifas never changed the robes may be may be different but the corruption and the evil never changed and then what happens once you get your ananias and kaifas link them to a corrupt leader political leader boom the citizens are in a chain because the strength of a politician equals to the religious leader they have next to them depending on their country on nation and the citizens are the ones put in chain so exploitation is a menace because it's so rooted and it's so deep and the thing is as long as people don't know their voice you will be exploited if you don't know your place you will be exploited if you don't know if you don't have a stand you will be exploited if you don't know the law of the land you will be exploited so it's very important to always make sure understand your rights understand the laws of the land understand everything that pertains to who you are and what is meant for you and raise your voice because as long as you never raise your voice as long as you never say what's going on as long as you never expose a step and say hey this is wrong this is my right this is someone's right or a community right, or whatever it may be someone will keep exploiting and suppressing you the only way to win exploiters the only way to go against people who exploit you is to raise your voice if you never raise your voice they will keep exploiting they will keep doing what they are doing until there's no one else who will ever speak and this goes across the board it's not in the political or the judiciary or legislature it's within society if you don't have a voice and an avenue of where to raise your voice you will be crushed right left and center so know your voice know your place know the rules of the land and don't be the one who is taking peanuts or crumbs from the table 
when the whole cake was meant for you. May God help us all.